Yes, amen. amen. That's right. Bless you, Lord. Bless you. Amen. 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 And he is the Prince of Peace, amen? amen. And he is our, our strength and our shield and our buckler amen. in time of need, praise be to God. He's our everything. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. All right. Well, if no one else has, has anything, then if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I'd like to return to the book of Colossians. Chapter number four for our text, uh, uh, Colossians uh, chapter uh, number, or excuse me, chapter number three, or number four, excuse me, I'm sorry, chapter number four, I'll get it right here in a minute. Colossians chapter number four, we'll read verses one through six, we're going to be talking about redeeming the time this morning, redeeming the time, amen. Colossians chapter number four, let's pick up reading in verse number one, masters given to your servants that which is just and equal knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Uh, continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. And beloved, if there's one thing that's needed in our nation and in our society and our world today, it is prayer, amen. 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 The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, to pray without ceasing. Amen. I hope you're praying for uh, a, 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 a antibiotic or, for, or an, a vaccine or whatever it is uh, to be developed for this COVID-19. I hope you're praying for the upcoming election. Amen. I hope you're praying for God's mercy. Yeah. I hope you're praying uh, for uh, God's blessing. I hope you're praying for others. Amen. Yes, we sir. ought to be about praying. Amen. Right. Amen. Uh, notice continuing prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. 
Wilco praying also for us that God would open to us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom to them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures this morning. Dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house this morning to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we are thankful for the many blessings that you've already freely bestowed upon us uh, this morning. Uh, Lord, we're thankful for the very breath of life you've given us to enjoy thy creation. And Lord, we're thankful for the health and for the ability to be here in your house this morning, dear Lord. And we're thankful for uh, each and every one of the brethren that's came this way to assemble together to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we are thankful for your word and for the truth and instru instruction that we receive from thy word. And Father, this morning, now as we look to the bread of life, Lord, I pray that you would feed us with spiritual food from heaven as we look into your word for instruction and guidance. Lord, I pray that all of us here would open up our ears and our hearts to the preaching of thy word, that we'd be closer drawn unto thee. And Lord, I ask and pray that you would help me this morning as I preach. Father, give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Lord, I ask and pray that you would strengthen my voice, dear Lord, uh, to be able to declare thy word. And Father, if there's one here this morning that's in our midst, that's unsure of where they would spend eternity or has never been saved, Father, I pray that you convict their heart of sin, that you draw them into yourself, and that they would realize that eternity is forever. And Father, that... Uh, that today is the day of salvation and that they would come forward today and call upon the name of the Lord and be saved and know for sure that heaven will be their home before it's eternally too late. Lord, I pray that you would deal with their heart and that they would come forward and be saved today. And Lord, uh, I pray now that you would just bless in the remainder of the service, have your will and way. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done and we thank you and praise you for what you're going to do because we're asking and believing in the name that's above every name. For it's in the name of Jesus we do ask and pray these things. And amen. amen. Notice here in chapter 4, uh, verse number 1, Master's given to your servants that which is just and equal. Know that you also have a master in heaven. And beloved, uh, your employer and those that are in position of authority on your job, uh, those that are saved will stand before God and give an account of how they've treated their employees. And, of course, uh, we see here chapter 4. This is going back uh, to chapter 3 and ties in with that. But, yes, they're going to give an account, uh, account of how they treat their employees. Right. And it's to be just and to be fair. That is God's desire for how employers should treat their employees. Amen? But we don't see that practice in the workplace, do we not? And notice here now verse number 2, continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. And beloved, I've already touched base on this, that we need to be in the attitude and in the matter of prayer. And beloved, prayer is not only us asking God to do something or to give us something, but beloved, our prayer should have thanksgiving included in it. Amen. And beloved, yes, we're to go to the throne of grace and we're to pray to God and ask for God's healing, for God's direction, uh, for God's counsel, uh, for God's comfort, whatever the case may be. But sometimes our prayer should be that we just enter into our prayer closet and thank God for his blessings that he's freely bestowed upon each and every one of us. Amen. Beloved, I'm not deserving of any of, I'm not deserving of any of God's blessings. And beloved, no one here is deserving of God's blessings, yet he blesses us freely each and every day. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 68, verse number 19, that the Lord daily loadeth us with benefits or blessings. Amen. Uh, beloved, uh, you have the health to be here today. You have life to be here today. The clothes on your back, the shoes on your feet, the vehicle that you have, the home that you reside in. Uh, beloved, be thankful for what God's given you. Amen. The food in your pantry. Uh, be thankful for the friends and the family that you have, the church that you come to, your church family. Hey, we all have something to be thankful of this morning. Amen. And sometimes we just need to enter into our prayer closet and give thanks to the one who is worthy of thanks, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. And notice here in verse number three, will the praying also for us that 
God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I'm also in bonds. And uh, there's a lot in that verse, but I'll just uh, touch it up with this synopsis. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul saying, pray for us that the Lord would give us a door of utterance or an opportunity to share the gospel message and the deity of Jesus Christ and tell others about Jesus. That's what he's asking for, an opportunity to tell others about Jesus Christ. Amen. And beloved, this ought to be the same prayer and same desire that each and every one of us have here this morning. Amen. Uh, God gives us a door of utterance, and I'm afraid some, uh, sometimes, and more times than not, we don't take advantages of those opportunities to tell others about Jesus Christ and what the Lord has done for us. Uh, sometimes uh, I have people come up and say, say, say to me, Preacher, you know what, Preacher? I'm not good at memorizing, and I can't memorize Scripture. I have difficulty with it. Bless or Preacher, I, 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 I know what I want to say, but I'm just not able to say it. I know it's in the Bible. I just don't know where to go to in the Bible. I believe that's why the Bible tells us the Word of God gives us this instruction to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. And beloved, you need to be, be in the Bible reading the Word of God on a daily basis. Uh, beloved, you need that spiritual food, if you will, uh, as a child of God. Because, beloved, if you don't feed upon the Word of God as a child of God, you are going to become spiritually anemic. We heard testimony this morning of uh, Brother Jeremy, how he got out in the world and fell under apostate teaching and inerrant doctrine. And beloved, uh, it's easy to do if you're not grounded and settled in the Word of God. Right. There is so much uh, false teaching out there. Beloved, you can fall into any type of false doctrine if you're not careful. Yes, sir. That's why you need to study uh, God's Word and read God's Word on a daily basis. Yeah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And that's why I encourage everybody each and every week when you come to a service here, invariably at some point in time, I try to exhort and encourage you to study and read the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So that way you'll be able to identify a truth from a lie. Truth. And beloved, when the storms of life come your way, and it's not if... They're going to come your way. Beloved, the storms and the trials will come your way. That when you enter into a valley, you can have the assurance and have the promises of, of the Word of God in your heart and in your mind. And you can experience that peace which passeth all understanding when the trial and the storm comes your way. Amen. Beloved, uh, uh, being in ministry now for some 20 uh uh, 22, 23, 24 years. Uh, beloved, there was a time that I was not grounded and settled in God's Word, and I was spiritually anemic and starved. Uh, beloved, when an individual first gets saved, the Bible says for that believer, uh, uh, for that believer, he's a babe in Christ, and he desires the sincere milk of the Word. Uh, beloved, when, a, when a, a young boy or girl is born physically, you don't feed them with ribeye steak and tater chips and hamburgers and hot dogs for their first meal. They're not developed enough to partake of that. And when they get older, when they, you know, you, you feed them what? You feed them milk, don't you? You start them off on milk. And then next is all that colored stuff, baby food. And you start feeding them baby food. And then it's mashed taters, you know. And then you start feeding them something soft like bread. And then, Lord, you curse them the first time you give them a hamburger or tater chip because then they don't want to go back to anything. Amen. <laughs> but you see, they begin to grow and develop and mature, and then they start eating meat and food that has substance, that has the proteins and the carbohydrates and the things that the physical body needs to mature and grow and survive. Amen. Beloved, it's the same thing in the same way spiritually. When you get saved, you're not going to know everything there is to know about the Bible. You're just going to know bits and pieces of it, and you're not going to know a lot of the truths from God's Word because you're a babe in Christ, and you are beginning on a, a Bible reading plan, and you start to read the Word of God. You're a babe in Christ, and you're reading the milk of the Word. 
God does not intend for Christians, for his children, to stay spiritual babies. He intends for us to grow yeah. and mature and That's get right. into the meat of the Amen. word right. and learn about the deeper truths of the word of God. Amen. Amen. It's a developing process spiritually, Bless just like you and I develop physically. Does everybody understand this? And so, beloved, uh, we all have that door of utterance and we need to have the Word of God embedded in our heart because you're going to be confronted with somebody that's going to ask you some questions about eternity and ask you about who Jesus Christ is. With are praying also for us that God would open to us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I'm also in bonds that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Now notice here verse number 5 and this is uh, where I want us to spend the majority of our time at. Walk in wisdom to them that are without, now notice this, redeeming the time. Now the scriptures here when it's talking about in verse number 5, walk in wisdom to, toward them that are without. Now, beloved, it's not talking about those that are without a job. It's not talking about those that are, are without a home to live in. It's not talking about those that don't have anything to eat. It's not talking about those that don't have a large wardrobe and are in need of clothing. It's talking about those that are without Jesus Christ. They're in a lost state. They're unregenerate and they need to be born again. Amen. They're without salvation. They're without God. And beloved, may I submit to you this morning, if you're trying to get through life on your own and you're trying to get through it without Jesus Christ, uh, beloved, you're without hope this morning. You're building your life upon the foundation of life-seeking sand. Yeah. Beloved, you need Jesus Christ this morning. Yeah. And the only way that you're going to go to heaven yeah. is not by coming to church, not by being baptized, Bless. not by being kind and doing good works, but realizing and acknowledging to God that you're a sinner, that you're lost, and that you need salvation, and that you're putting your faith and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, that He died on the cross for your sins. He took your place on the cross. He bore your sin. He bore your penalty. He took your place on the cross. And you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to save you by faith. Amen. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank God for that promise. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the promise of salvation. And so, beloved, uh, this morning, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. And, beloved, let me tell you something. One thing I've learned in ministry is lost people know how Christians ought to behave and how to act. Uh, beloved, they're watching you. And so we need to walk in wisdom. In other words, we need to guard our testimony, especially to those that are lost. Yes. Because, beloved, people are watching you and I. Yes, sir. And let me tell you something. Lost people don't understand the perspective and don't understand, don't understand uh, spiritually when Christians go through difficult times in life, they don't understand sometimes the way that we act and don't understand the way that we think. Because, beloved, when you get saved, you make peace with God. In your lost condition, you're at war with God. And the wrath and the condemnation and judgment of God abides upon an individual that's lost. But when you get saved, you make peace with God through Jesus Christ. And then you can have that peace which passeth all understanding. And so lost people, when they... Uh, uh, when they see Christians and they found out that they've got cancer, they found out that they've lost their job, they find out that there's some great storm or tragedy that's taken place in their life, and they look at you and they see that you're calm and they see that you have peace and they see that you're still able to keep moving forward. They don't understand that. Because they're spiritually blinded to the truth. They don't have Jesus Christ in their heart. And so yes, it's important for us to walk in wisdom toward them that are without. And when we talk to those that are lost and without Jesus Christ, we must understand that they don't have what we have. And they don't have the eyes of faith. And they don't view life like we view life. You see. 
And so walk in wisdom for them that are without redeeming the time. Now, beloved, there's two things that we need to be mindful of this morning in regard to redeeming your time. One thing that the devil likes to tell each and every one of us is, you know what? If you're going to do something for God, why don't you just wait and do it tomorrow? You'll have more time tomorrow. It'll be more convenient for you to do tomorrow. Now, I don't think that there's anybody in here that procrastinates at all, is there? Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I think we all, to a certain degree, put things off to an, uh, another time, another day. Uh, beloved, you all know, now you all know that I'm an Andy Griffith fan. <laughs> and there's one particular episode of Andy Griffith. I'm about to make a spiritual application from this show. Buddy Epson, and you all know Buddy Epson from the Beverly Hillbillies. He makes a special guest appearance on Andy Griffith as a hobo, as a bum. And uh, uh, Barney keeps arresting him because he's either loitering or being a vagrant. He's being a hobo. That's all he's doing. He's just drifting through life, trying to find loopholes and take advantage of the system. And Andy says, you know what? What you need is a job. And guess what? I've got some hedges at the house that need some trimming. And Buddy Epson says, you know what? I can do that for you, and I'll go do it. I'll go do that job for you. And so they switch scenes from the courthouse, and they're there at Andy's house, and he's got the hedge clippers there, and he goes and sits down on the steps. And Opie comes up and says, are you going to trim the hedges or not? And he says, well, I'm thinking about whether it should be like Buckingham Palace or something else. And he says, you know what? He said, why don't we just wait and we'll do this another time and we'll do this another day. And Opie says, well, Paul just trims them off, off the top. And I never will forget this statement that he made. It's such a spiritual truth. There is nothing a man cannot do tomorrow. And he's decided he's going to go fishing that day yeah. and not trim the hedges like he said he was going to do. Yeah. Beloved, how guilty are you and I as children of God procrastinating with the door of utterance, with the opportunity God gives us to share the gospel message and make a difference in somebody's life? Because, beloved, people are watching you and I. People are observing you and I. And you may think that the words and the actions that you carry about in your daily life have no impact on others. That is a lie from the devil. What you say, what you do, not only impacts your own life, but it impacts the lives of others. And for us not to take advantage of the opportunities that God gives us, because guess what? Once those opportunities are gone, you cannot buy them back. Amen. Now, beloved, that's one thing that video games have conditioned people today in our society. If you don't like the outcome, just rewind it back and play it again and go play the game again Amen. until you get the victory. Life is not that way. That's right. Once an opportunity is missed and lost, you can't go back and do it again. That's right. It's lost for eternity. And so procrastination. There's a gentleman that we read about in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul was bought before his accusers. And the Apostle Paul not only shared Scripture and the truth and the mystery of Christ with the unbelievers, but he also shared his Damascus Road account of what God done for him when he got saved. And we read about a man that Paul's witness to. His name is uh, Felix. And in Acts chapter 24, verses 24 and 25... The word of God tells us that after certain days when Felix came with his wife Priscilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. So here's the door of utterance for the apostle Paul to share what Jesus has done for him. Paul did this. And here's Felix's heart and insight. The scriptures give us some insight here. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. How about that? Felix trembled. Holy Ghost conviction set in on him. He knew he was lost. He knew he needed salvation. He trembled at the thought of righteousness and temperance and judgment to come. I want to stand before God. God's wanting me to be saved. If I don't, judgment's going to come my way. And he trembled of Holy Ghost conviction. 
Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, and when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. How many times you and I, of God's people, said, You know what, preacher, I'll go knock on doors when it's more convenient. I'll pray when it's more convenient. I'll tell my children about Jesus Christ when it's more convenient, but right now I've got to get supper done and I've got to get them to the ballpark and I've got to get back and give them a bath. We've got to do homework. And by that time, it's 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night and you've not shared one thing about Jesus Christ with your family. And I'm not saying those are bad things. I'm just saying redeeming. The thought now this morning, church, is redeeming the time. Amen. Once that time's gone, it's lost. You can't yeah. go back and get it. It's true, brother. And beloved, God wants you to be saved today. Sir. If you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, hey, God wants you saved today. That's right. Don't wait until tomorrow because, beloved, you and I are not promised tomorrow. That's right. Amen. That's the truth. We're not promised tomorrow. First Corinthians chapter or Second Corinthians chapter six, verse number two tells us, "For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time." Today is a day of salvation. Yes, sir. Right. God wants you saved today because guess what? You may not have that opportunity tomorrow. Amen. That's right. Beloved, right now, both my lungs are eating up with cancer. It's just that simple. There's no other way around it. Both of my lungs are consumed with cancer right now. But, beloved, that doesn't mean I'm going to die from cancer. That's right. I could have a heart attack today. Somebody could drive by and shoot me today. I could have a stroke today. You know, the doctors are saying, if you, if you don't get treated, you've got a year to live. If you get treatment and your body rejects it, you may have a year to live. If you get treatment, you may have three or more five years to live. And beloved, I'm making preparations for my family because I may not be here tomorrow. i got to get busy doing something today. Will I have time to do it today? And beloved, I appreciate your prayers, but I hope you'll pray for my family. Sure. My family's, I, I, I tell you, I tell you, I, I have a peace which passeth all understanding. Yeah. And beloved, I know without the shadow of a doubt yeah. that here upon this earth, yes. or when I get home in heaven, right. God's going to heal me. Yeah. I know that with all my heart. Bless God's going to heal me. Yeah. But to watch my mom and daddy cry, yeah. and to watch some of you all cry, yes. and my wife yesterday just Bless poured out the tears. Yes. And she come up and put her arms around me. And I could feel the warm tears coming down my shirt because she said, I don't want you to die. Bless him, Lord. And let me tell you something, I don't want to die either. But it's appointed to man once to die. Then after this, the judgment. And beloved, if we all live long enough, Bless him, Lord. we're all going to meet that appointed time that yeah. we're going to die. Amen. And I told her, I said, honey, I am standing right in front of you right now. Yeah. Honey, Now's not the time to cry. Bless they him. may be in a time in the future that you'll cry. Bless him, Lord. But I'm here today. Amen. And let's love life. Yes. And let's enjoy today. Yes. Today. Amen. While I'm still here. Yes. Amen. 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 And beloved, yes. I encourage you and I exhort you here today to live life to the fullest. To love life and enjoy time with family and friends. Yes. Because we all have this presumption there'll be a more convenient time tomorrow and we have time tomorrow. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4 verses 14 and 15, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. I believe somebody asked me a few weeks ago, Preacher, why do you say the Lord will? My husband says that. What, do you, what does he say the Lord's will? Why do you say the Lord's will? I just read it to you. James chapter 4 verse number 15. For that you ought to say if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. And beloved, at the end of the day, God is the final authority. Yes, he is. Yes. The doctors may say I have a year. He may say I have 15 years. That's right. Uh, beloved, he is the final authority. He has the final say. And so, beloved, my hope is not in man. My hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And when he says, come forward, it doesn't make any difference what treatment. It don't make any difference what my health is. It don't make any difference where I'm at. Where I'm at. When he says, come home, child, I am going home. And you are too. That's right. <clears throat> so, beloved.
So, beloved, that door of utterance, redeeming the time and telling others about Jesus Christ, hey, we better do it today because we're not promised tomorrow. Psalm chapter 89, verse number 47. Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? A beloved, in the scope of eternity, we're here today and gone tomorrow, are we not? You know, we're not going to be here for a long period of time. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 24 tells us, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. I was out mowing yesterday, that simple activity. God only knows. I hate mowing. I hate weed eating. Uh, uh, <laughs> you all have heard my testimony about weed eaters. Uh, well, if you weed eat, that's got to be simple. I hate that with a passion. And you say, preacher, you got any scripture for that? All I can say about that is this. When you see a weed eater, the word of God says to abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. <laughs> that's the best I can do with that. But the fact of the matter is, I was out there weed eating yesterday, and I was mowing over mom's yard, and I was mowing over my yard, and I noticed the flowers on the side of the house in mom's flower bed, and it wasn't but just two or three weeks ago, they were so vibrant, so colorful, and now some of them have died, some of them are withering, and some of them are still alive. Is that not the way life is? Is that not the way our life is? We go through, and we bloom, and... We enjoy life, and then all of a sudden, as time goes by, we begin to wither away. You know, when it comes to that appointed time of judgment, isn't it? Uh, not Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed to men once to die, then after this, the judgment. God counts down to that appointed time. You and I, we count up in years to that appointed time. Isn't that interesting? But in the scope of eternity, we're only here for a little while. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 12, and I'm about finished this morning, church. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. Now, beloved, we don't know when God's going to call us home. So we better redeem the time and take advantage of the door of utterance that God gives us when? Today! Because we're not promised tomorrow. So the time is now. I must work the works of him that sent me. John chapter 9, verse number 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Uh, beloved, now is the time to be laboring in God's vineyard. The problem is right now, the plenteous truly is, uh, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. We need to get busy. Amen. Romans chapter 13, verse number 11 in closing. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Now, beloved, whether you realize this or not, as you've been sitting there watching your watch and watching the clock, it's been drawing one more minute closer to time to dismissal and time to go home. And for you and I as children of God, each day that we live through life is a day closer you and I are going home. And so, beloved, if we're going to do anything for God, he gives us all that door of utterance. And it was so convicting. And what brought this thought along my, along my mind was I went to, to the doctor's office and had a follow-up visit. And, didn't, didn't, and I shared this Wednesday night at church. When we left our Monday, we were so disheartened, so discouraged. We did not know anything more about my circumstances and where I was going and what the plan was than when we did when we went in. And we were so hopeful that appointments had been made and then options, the treatment options were going to be available and that something was going to be put into place that day. And we were so disappointed and so discouraged. And I began to get online and found Vanderbilt University and they had a little questionnaire thing to fill out and I sent it in. The next day I called Vanderbilt and uh, give them my information and within nine minutes, within nine minutes, I was able to do what the doctor's office hadn't been able to do in two and a half weeks. Now it's making me an appointment to see a specialist at Vanderbilt. I did not make the appointment because I was afraid they may have called and had something lined up and so I said, I'll call you back tomorrow. I'll call you back tomorrow and I'll try to, I'll try to make an appointment once I find out what the doctor's done. And I was trying to give them all the information. I was driving down the road as a dear lady in her church. She's in the service this morning. 
I had her two boxes of tomatoes and I was trying to read the information, try to drive down the road and try to talk to her at the same time. And I'm like, I cannot make an appointment right now. It's not safe. <laughs> and so anyway, called the doctor's office. We're still waiting on Vanderbilt. I told Christy, the wait's over. We're not waiting on Vandy. We're going to pick up the ball and we're going to start running with it. Amen. The next day she called and guess what? I go this coming Friday to Vanderbilt Amen. to see a cancer specialist that all she treats is those that have lung cancer from thyroid disease. That's all she does. Amen. That's good. That's good stuff. But I said all that to say this. My endocrinologist that I deal with in Knoxville, he's a Christian. And he said, he said, he said, Chris, he said, I can treat you all day long, but it's God that's got to do the healing. Amen. Amen. All the healing comes from the Lord. Amen. How do I know that? I've witnessed to him. Amen. I found out about him. The cancer doctor here in town, when we walked out, I think the reason I was most discouraged wasn't that I hadn't gotten any more information. It was the information that I withheld from them and talking to them about Jesus Christ, Amen. the great Amen. physician. Amen. And I realized it wasn't the lack of information that was really troubling me. It was because I withheld information to them and talked to them about the Lord that really troubled me Amen. because I had a missed opportunity. I had a door of utterance that I did not take advantage of. Redeeming the time. I cannot go back and go through that meeting again. And so how important it is for us to redeem the time. Amen. And so at this time, if you're willing and able, I'd like to invite everybody to stand, please. Everybody standing. Everybody's heads bowed. Everyone's eyes closed. Brother Larry, if you'll make your way over to the guitar. I'll ask a question here this morning. Maybe there's someone here in our service. And the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to your heart and you're here and you've never been saved or you're not for sure heaven will be your home for eternity. And friend, if you're here and you've never been saved or you're not for sure heaven will be your home for eternity, just put your hand up and put it right back down and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you. But I am going to pray for you that you'll get that taken care of today and come forward and be saved before it's eternally too late. Anybody like that, say, Preacher, pray for me. Just slip your hand up and right back down say, Preacher, pray for me. God bless you. Anybody else? All right, I'm speaking to saved people now. Say, preacher, when you pray, would you pray for me and my family? Me and my family have many needs, and the Lord knows all about them. And when you pray, would you include me and my family in your prayers? Would you slip your hand up at this time? God bless you. I see those hands. Dear Heavenly Father, you saw the hands that were raised, and you know the needs of your people. And Father, I pray for this one that is concerned about eternity and where they would spend eternity at. Father, I don't know what's going through their heart right now, but Lord, I know that you know the need of their heart. And Father, I pray that you would speak to their heart this morning. Help them to realize here's an opportunity. Here's this chance to settle where they would know where they would spend eternity and that heaven would be their home for eternity if they would come forward and be saved today. And Father, may they be reminded that none of us are promised tomorrow. And this may be the last opportunity that they have to make things right before they step out into eternity. And so, Father, I pray for this one that has questions. Father, I pray that you would draw them into yourself. And Lord, I pray that you would give them the strength and the guidance to step out and come forward and ask Jesus Christ to come into the heart and save them, where they would have the assurance to know that heaven would be their home throughout the ages. And Lord, I pray for others that have raised their hand. I pray for your people. Lord, you know the needs of your people. And I pray for each and every person and each and every family that's here this morning. I ask and pray, dear Lord, that your hand of blessing would be upon each and every one. And for those that could not be here this morning, you know their needs, you know their circumstance. And Father, I pray that you would bless them wherever they may be at. And Father, I ask and pray now that you would bless this invitation have your will and way. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And now with the heads bowed and eyes closed, if you need to do business with the Lord, I invite you to come as Brother Larry plays the guitar. If God's dealing with your heart about anything, you come forward. If you need help in prayer, they will be somebody here to help you in prayer. But you obey God this morning. Jesus loves you. He cares for you. and He wants to help you. Will you let him?
friend, if God's dealing with your heart about salvation, I beg of you, don't wait. Get it settled today. We're not promised tomorrow. You may have a physical need. You may have a financial need. You may have an emotional need, an employment need, whatever it is. Come give it to Jesus. Casting your care upon him, for he cared for you. No one will ever love you like Jesus. Thank you and God bless you and all God's people said. Amen. 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 Well, I trust and pray that you've been blessed for being in the house of the Lord this morning. And I apologize for going over a little bit on the time this morning and everything. I'll try to make it up to you tonight or in the next service. Amen. But I thank everybody for being here. I appreciate your patience and I appreciate your faithfulness and your attendance this morning. Amen. I appreciate that in a, in a mighty way. But at this time, we'll go ahead and pray and dismiss again to everybody. I say thanks for being here especially to our guests and our visitors. I want to say thanks for being here, and I certainly hope that you'll come back and see us again in the future if it be the Lord's will. But at this time, let's take this opportunity now. We'll be dismissed in prayer, and I hope you'll be right back in your place tonight. Men's and Ladies Prayer Room Service at 515, 6 o'clock preaching as we continue on in our study in the book of 2 Timothy. And so at this time, let's pray and be dismissed in prayer. And J.B. McCarter, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, please? Father, Lord, we thank you.